So on that note, I'd like to introduce my third guest, Ricky Jones, a consultant and team investigator for over 28 years in law enforcement and government private uh, operations. He's been also a film consultant uh, on uh, wonderful films. Mr. Jones has performed investigations against organized crime and gangs in Los Angeles as an outside investigator. He's also worked with law enforcement, terrorism, and narcotics. He's also performed uh, work in uh, for decades, but has also been trained trained in weaponless defense structure uh, instructor, small arms instructor, FBI certified sniper instructor, FBI range master instructor, narcotics training. He's also specialized in crisis intervention, crisis negotiations, uh, certified in Israel, and has held positions in executive management in U.S. government. He's also worked on the films I think I've alluded to that he's worked on uh, films such as Olympus uh, Has Fallen, starring uh, Morgan Freeman and Jerry Butler, and The Equalizer, starring Denzel Washington. So with that, uh, I wanted to introduce you in a, a long way here, Ricky, because you are also helping us to head up the investigation around Marilyn Monroe, and I wanted people to understand the type of experience that you have. So welcome to the show. Thank you, Nina. Glad to be here. Well, um, you know, one of the things I'm asking people is what fascinates them about Marilyn Monroe. So let me ask you that question first, and then I'll get to my second question. I think overall it's her whole life, um, but more importantly for me, it, it's her death. Uh, and what led to that point and led to that day, there's so many unanswered questions, there are so many conspiracies out there uh, to really find out the facts about it all, to really put it to rest is what fascinates me to have that ability to do that. Well, it was interesting when you and I first started talking, we started talking about the film. And, you know, one of the things that Ricky does is he brings in teams of experts on films and he helps to authenticate the actors. So if Jerry Butler is playing a CIA agent or Jamie Foxx or somebody like that, he will he and his his group of consultants will come in and really help those actors, you know. And I thought, wow, but you know so much about the Maryland case. Let's let's, uh, you know, as we start to uncover this mystery, let's uh, let's start to work together together. Uh, uh, and so let's talk a little bit about who we're bringing on. And and the whole investigation team isn't complete yet, but uh, we're certainly getting there. Uh, let's talk about Daryl, because you brought on Daryl, and I think he's got a wonderful 20-plus uh, years of experience as well. Tell us a little bit about him. Well, I think Daryl is the only person that is part of this that was alive when Marilyn Monroe was alive and when she passed away. And uh, he was very... <clears throat> um, a very good investigator at the time and very good common sense and uh, a lot of red flags back then uh, came up uh, to him. Daryl has a lot of years in the Department of Defense. He was in the uh, Army CID investigations and he served our government for over 48 years. So he's a, he's a wonderful person to have. He's very methodical. Uh, he's very precise and he can evaluate things better than most people that I know. And then we have uh, what we like to call him Skip, but yeah, uh, Skip. his real name is Owen. So tell us about uh, yeah. uh, you know Skip and his, uh, his background. Well, Skip's a uh, retired LAPD officer. Uh, he worked LAPD homicide. Skip is very well respected. Uh, he was one of the best homicide investigators on LAPD. Uh, I've known Skip for years, and I've respected him as well as other people. And He's just very valuable because this all took place in LAPD's area back then. And uh, Skip, like myself and Daryl, know the history of law enforcement and how LAPD really established law enforcement in America today from creating SWAT, which helped the Navy SEALs. Uh, They created undercover narcotics. They created vice. They are the mother of all law enforcement. Uh, for what they've done to advance law enforcement. And knowing how that they worked in the past and how they work in the future and having Skip, who's, you know, done uh, 16-plus years um, with LAPD, you can look at the past and then look at the future and go, okay, these are how things were done then and how they're done now, and Skip, what do you think? 
Yeah, and I think that that's the that's one of the things just for everybody listening out there is you know what is the investigation team? What what are you trying to achieve here? And one of the things in in bringing um, you know the the law enforcement uh, people that have the experience is as I said at the very beginning of the hour, my goal is not to bash people. It's not about oh look what you did, etc. It's not about that. It's about you know uncovering some truths and revealing a historical event that at this point I think just needs to come 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 through come out in a way that like you said is not necessarily from these outlandish rumors but dissecting fact from fiction and one of the ways that we can do that is through evidence the files and being able to open up the case and be able to look at that from not pointing and blaming but from really uh, getting everybody to work together to make this a win-win. This could be a wonderful unveiling of a historical event. You know, this is not, didn't happen last week, you know, and all of us did, you know, if we look back in our, in our closets, we probably all have things that, you know, we wish we, we didn't do back in the day. So I think this isn't, this is something that uh, could be uh, a really wonderful uh, discovery for all of us listening. Yes. And I think, if we have the opportunity to sit with the chief of police with uh, LAPD, uh, Chief Beck, and explain to him, you know, face to face, and that's the hope that, you know, with all the rumors and, you know, LAPD gets bashed all the time. This is not what this is about. Uh, you know, Nina, I've always told, and we've talked about this, you know, the truth is going to set the whole rumors and everything free. The yes. facts don't lie. Facts are facts. Evidence is evidence. And in law enforcement, you know, unless it's an eyewitness, uh, it's just hearsay. And it doesn't matter if it's yeah. from someone else. And they have the file. Uh, the file's never been allowed to the public. And we're not asking it to be made to the public, but let us take our team in there with LAPD's top homicide detective that's current, with Skip retired, with Mr. Connerton, with you, and with myself. And with the corner that uh, we're getting, let us look at the evidence uh, in their facility, never taking it away, never videoing it or uh, taking photos of it. But with them sitting there, let us review it and have our open discussion with each other so we can figure out with the evidence that's there, what is fact and what is fiction. And I think it'll really help America to know what really took place. You know, back then... LAPD had the Black Hat Squad, and it was their responsibility when anybody from Washington and the White House was here, they followed them. When high-profile crime members were here, they followed them. When high-profile celebrities such as Marilyn Monroe, who had affiliation with the White House, who had affiliation with organized crime, they followed her. So these records are very important. And this is one of those things that LAPD established and it was more so for their protection. And it was a wonderful idea that they had to create this Black Hat Squad, and they were very elite uh, officers with LAPD, very responsible, very respected, and that's why they were appointed. And this is a wonderful thing about LAPD. They were the department that created that whole policy of doing this for their protection. So there's a lot of things that happened <clears throat> the day that she died, from the first LAPD officer there to when her doctor arrived to the records at the desk to the records of phone calls coming in and going out because they kept those records back then. And to have the ability to just to view them and to have an open discussion and say, we've seen this and these are the facts and this is the conclusion based on the evidence. And LAPD holds that key and, you know, again, You and I have talked about this. I'm a retired L.A. County Deputy Sheriff. LAPD is the premier law enforcement in the world, and we respect them. And I don't believe they're hiding anything as much as people would like to say that. I just think there's things in there that are classified that they're trying to protect uh, images, not of themselves, but of the people that were involved back then. Yeah, And and that's my professional opinion. Yeah, and I, I, and that that very may be the case, and I think that uh, the the wonderful thing about what we're trying to do here is that 
you know, there was a tragedy back uh, 52 yeah. years ago, right? Mm-hmm. And in yeah. in tragedy is something that we deal with every single day. But if it stays in tragedy and it doesn't transform, then none of us can heal. And the key to, I think, unlocking this, if we go towards the healing and the transformation, then everybody wins, including the LAPD. And so that's, those are my thoughts on that. And I think that's really important as we start to open up uh, the investigation and uh, come from that place versus, you know, and you said it about not just, you know, the public, but the, you know, our cultural, you know, kind of look, it, it doesn't go away. So at some point, why not just explore it and open it up? Because people will think what they want to think until the truth sets you free. So right. that's those are my two cents too, and I know you and I kind of agree on that. But but yeah. I I love what we're doing. We also have Dr. Scott Bond, who is a professor of criminology at Drew University. He's also a critically acclaimed author, a public speaker, and media expert. He's uh, written several books, and one of them is upcoming book on suicide that I'm very excited. It's called Suicide is the New Murder, Anger Turned on Oneself, and I think he'll be a great asset to our team. We have a psychiatrist coming on board. We have a coroner coming on board. We have a Maryland expert that's going to be with us next week, and boy, does he know a lot. So, uh, you know, it's going gonna, it's gonna to be quite a team of people that are going to be uh, joining us, and uh, I, I invite all of the listeners, too, to, to join it as well because we have a petition and you can go to our website goodnightmaryland.com uh, sign the petition it's not a, a hit you over the head uh, LA district attorney or coroner uh, you know letter to them it's more of inviting them to really look at this case again and I'd love for all of you listening to sign the petition uh, so so tell me this um, where do you think what do you think um we go from here in terms of our investigation. I I think that there's a lot of people that have a lot of, you know, rumors out there, outlandish rumors. Do you think that we're going to have the ability to really kind of dissect fact from fiction? Because that's really one of my goals here. I really do. And how we do that is people that were there, uh, people that personally knew her, people that had knowledge of her daily activities and people that were there the last day of her life. That's where the credibility lies. Yeah, there's so much hearsay. There's so much rumor, you know, from oh she was murdered by the Kennedys to she was murdered by the mob to just so many things. But that's just rumors. Yes, and that's people conjecturing on what their feelings are about it. But what you're asking and wanting to be a part of is let's let's just cut to the truth. Let's look at the facts. The people that were there, people that knew her, that the police report, the coroner's report. Uh, I know that the federal documents have uh, so much blacked out in it. And, you know, we would like to have a copy that's not blacked out. But if it is, you know, between Mr. Connor, myself and other people on our team, we can read through the lines because that's what we did. So, yes, yes. Well, um, I, I think we're going to have a lot to explore here, Ricky. We got to we got to take a break here, but you know we're going to be talking and we're going to be continuing the conversation. Uh, it's very intriguing and very thought provoking. So I just want to say thank you for being on our kickoff show. I think this is going to be an exciting adventure. Yes, Nina. Thank you very much. All right, you're listening to Good Night Maryland Radio. I'm Nina Bosky, and we will be back in just a moment. 